beautiful and lush everything around us is um, it is a true rainforest right here in the bottom and as you know this is going to be changing drastically as we climb up so let's go the rainforest is showing its true colors it's raining full rain gear ready to go camp. Check it out. 2,650 meters and it is Matik Mukumba camp. And come over here to see our lovely tent that has already been set up. So the porters have gone ahead of us, set up our toilets and our tents. And this is going to be home away from home tonight. Right there. And there's our toilet tent. Very important. Tent. Toilet tent. You want to come? And this is our dining room tent with water up front. We're about to have a feast. Um, reward for all the hard work. How are you feeling? Awesome. awesome. Excellent. Day one. How, how was the first day? Two and a half hours? Good. Easy. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. very nice. How much easier than that? Probably the easiest day was yesterday. Yesterday was the easiest day because we were at the hotel. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay soon to see what our feast is going to look like. Yes, here we go. The feast is about to commence. Coffee, tea, and popcorn in the middle of wilderness. <laughs> From this dimension to this dimension. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys, how do you feel? Second day, first break. Oh, breaks are awesome. Breaks are awesome. Hey.
if you have ever heard of this, this is a local medication special for Serge. No worry, no. Serge. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, delicious. Serge. Yeah. Yeah. Sage? Sage? Yeah, Serge. Sage? Yeah. Yeah. You get rid of ghosts this way. If you boil Thank that. Thank you for your gift, James. Yeah, for, for stomachache, if you have oh, a thing. Yeah. You can boil and drink juice from that. covered eight kilometers uh, which does not sound like a lot but it was a lot we had about two to three hours of essentially 70 to 80 percent incline so it was um, quite challenging and this is our first stop so we started at 720 it is 110 and uh, we just had a couple of short little um, bush bathroom breaks <laughs> And now we're here in our camp where we're actually going to be eating lunch and spending the night. And they are our tents right there. So I have been taking the uh, Dimoxin, which is the altitude sickness medication. Highly recommended. Um, one of the bad side effects is that it makes you pee a lot. So um, starting tomorrow, there's not going to be a lot of cover for the bush bathrooms. But um, overall, you just get a little tingles in your toes and your fingers. And uh, then you don't get sick. Hopefully, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Um, so I would highly recommend doing that and drinking at least three liters of water a day because you need to stay hydrated. Even if it's not hot, it's very easy to just lose your water um, through extensive exercise. Um, so today we have been walking quite a lot and I'm excited to actually get a little shut eye today because last night I slept for maybe one hour. Um, there was a bunch of animals making noises and you know, sleeping in a tent for the first time takes a little adjustment. But yeah, thank you so much for following on our journey. Um, this is our camp. There's a lot of different groups, as you can see. Uh, all the tents around, and this is where you register when you first come in. So you have to sign in to make sure that you're still alive. <laughs> Today, when we started in the morning, it was a rainforest, and you can see it is quite a different um, zone right now. So it is Moorland. Plants that you can see around us and there's some vultures following around i hope they don't expect one of us to drop that anytime soon <laughs> all right off to eat and uh, using the toilet tent over there Oh, it's this is recording. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey. hey. So, give us your feelings on day two. I mean, I feel like it's day five. So, that tells you, it kind of sums it up. Pretty a little much. red, got a lot of sun today. Babushka nose. Yeah. Um, feelings. Uh, it's a little cold. It's probably the easiest day was yesterday. Um, <laughs> the easiest it will be. Right? Where is the... the mountain is hidden by the clouds. It's right there. Yep. Ish. It's gonna get hard. That's what she said. It's gonna get hard. <laughs> <laughs>
check out our lovely non-inclined path. <laughs> A little longer, but we can do it. One hour in on day three. I am burning alive on this side, not on this side. <laughs> arrived to the Moir camp and you can see our beautiful surroundings we're a little bit in a inside of a of a valley so there's still wind but not too much so we started at 7 20 12 40 so we have been walking essentially that entire time with a few breaks and uh, we covered about nine to ten kilometers and we have increased up in altitude by 1000 meters um, most of the route was relatively flat, just a little bit of a, a little incline, but then at the end we had to climb rocks, um, essentially vertically, because you have to come up with <laughs> a thousand meter change in the altitude somehow. So uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of climbers at this, at this camp right now, because a lot of them have been doing the seven day tour and we're doing the eight day tour, which is a little bit easier. So I'm glad that we decided to do that. We are about to go in our lunch tent right there and have some delicious yummy lunch and hopefully warm up. It started really hot at the beginning of our hike. Um, I was burning up, my arm was completely, I think I got like a first degree burn. <laughs> Uh, I actually had to wear a sleeve on this side to cover it up and then as we kept climbing higher and higher it kept getting really cold as you can see my nose is red <laughs> so um, yay we made it are there eight pieces of fresh that? zucchini soup welcome to our humble abode cribs edition clam killy um, so this is where we're living for the next few days. Um, as you see right now, right here, this is my lovely bed. This is my lovely roomie. You're sick and tired of me. <laughs> and then here is his storage area. And here is my storage area. So quite a few important things to keep in mind is to get an extra um, thing for underneath you so that way you don't freeze to death and I made a makeshift pillow for my fleece and then very important for going to the banyo at night is a headlamp with a red light capability as well and then of course we have our creams and makeup and things and such and whatnot and here is our little prelude to our not so dirty tent so there you go enjoy Here we are, day four. Day four. Day four. Day four. Lava tower day. Lava tower day. Feels like we are on the surface of the moon. Maybe we are, maybe we're not. Ah! 
dirty, they try to make the cotton things in order to find how it can get warm because of the competition which are here. There's no enough soil here, there is no enough water, there is wind here. Uh, they are the same as a human being. Because even you, because there is a competition here because of cold, is why you have a more than one layer. Right. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Magnificent. Wow. All right, it's day four and we made it to Barranco camp. This is our camp right here. Um, so I have to say the trip started um, kind of difficult because right outside of our camp, um, the incline was um, essentially 80 to 90 degrees, steep incline and all rocky. And then <laughs> it leveled off a little bit, but then wouldn't you know it, it got cloudy and rainy and uh, windy and it was quite miserable. So we climbed up all the way up to the lava rock. Uh, excuse me while I'm looking at some notes. So we um, went to the lava tower, which was 15,000 feet. And that was our acclimatization. So we went all the way up. There were actually some people who were staying there, but we kept going cause we're cool like that. And then we kept going uh, down some crazy descent rocks really steep descent uh everything was iced over uh and then as you can see i have my ram pants on and uh my bottom of the pants are down by my knees so awesome <laughs> and uh now we arrived up to our ronco camp which is at um uh 13,077 feet so we went down so it's a little bit easier to breathe but here's the best part on the way to the camp check out what we see everywhere <gasps> do you see these beautiful trees they look like they're prehistoric they're amazing and they're called let me see let me see uh da, 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 da. they're called senecio forest uh and they're ma made up of giant ground cell trees and they have a little bit of cotton inside which is just absolutely spectacular so this is definitely the highlight of this hike. So all the rain and cold and wind and going downhill with my painful knees was absolutely worth it because I got to see these beauties. I'm so excited. So we are in our camp right now. You can see super misty, super cold, super rainy, super kind of gross, but um, lunch is awaiting us. Um, it took us about five hours, uh, six hours actually to get here. So uh, we're about to go eat, but on the way here, one of the porters actually fell and rolled his ankle. So I hope he's okay. He kept walking, but um, I don't know. That was sad. I, I was wanting to carry some of his stuff to lighten his load, but they wouldn't let me. So anyways, check out these beautiful trees. All right, lunch is waiting and I'm hungry. So peace out. See you in the next session. Kilimanjaro, 
Hakuna matata Franco walikuja Hakuna matata Pole pole walikwenda Hakuna matata Jambo oh! Jambo bwana habari gani nzuri sana Wageni wakare pesa ili manjaro Hakuna matata It is day five and we have just braved the Bronco wall. This is the way that we have come from. So um, it took us a good hour and a half to climb. And as you can see, we are above the clouds. And that, as you know how I kept saying that um, every day was a steeper and a steeper journey. Well, today has been the steepest because we actually had to use hands and feet to climb up like little mountain goats that we are. And we didn't even know that we were. So um, this is where our camp was yesterday. And look over there. What is that? That's where we're going to be in a couple of days, Kilimanjaro. So here's our, my lovely team. There's Marie. Hello. <laughs> and we have another hour and a half or so to our camp, which is straight across over there. And this is where we're going to be spending the night. Um, so this is our day today. Very short day compared to what I've been doing so far, but very strenuous. Um, so this has been exciting. Check out my awesome knee brace this has been helpful so we started off super bundled up with three layers of clothing and then as soon as we hit the sunshine we had to strip two layers and overnight everything was frozen and across our path there has been ice on every turn so but the second sun hits you everything changes so the weather here is very bipolar so you have to dress some layers and be ready for whatever might come your way all right stay tuned until we get to our next camp it's gonna be exciting excellent time and as you can see Kilimanjaro summit is right there but you can't see because of the clouds so the weather has been super bipolar the second the sun is covered it's cold and here we have all these crazy vulture looking birds just looking for food everywhere and uh, our way to the summit is going to be that way tomorrow so we spend the night here today we just had lunch and that beautiful tent over there and um yeah so tomorrow our journey continues again 
Chaga people, they are amazing, especially when it was a light or it was a strong sun, and they can see the mountain because it was enveloped by the glacier. They said, Oh, Kibo! So it's why this mountain known as a Kibo. So it means that it is amazing. What? I love it. Yeah. So there's Kibo, there's Shira, and there is. There is a Mawanzi. Shira, the first eruption, that mountain was started erupt. Uh, just a seven is that Shira? Yeah, Shira. Mm -hmm. 750,000 years ago. And the second one is Mawenzi, but Shira is extinct now. Second one is Mawenzi, was erupting 500,000 years ago. And the third one is this, is, that is the biggest one, was erupting 350,000 years ago. got to sleep in a little bit longer this morning so we started at 8 and it was a steady incline of about 45 to 75 degrees uh, up harsh rocks a little bit of a downtime a couple of breaks so here we are at the Barafu camp this is where we sign in and then we're gonna go climb up that hill for another 45 minutes to Kosovo camp and that's where we're going to be spending the night tonight so the air up here is not cooperating, so any movement takes a lot of effort because it's very sparse. <laughs> so even talking takes a lot out of you. So um, yeah, I'll check back in when we are at Kosovo camp. So this is very exciting because not a lot of companies get to spend the night at that camp. Most of them actually have to stay here. This is the base camp. Um, so what that means is that we're shaving off about 45 minutes of our early start tomorrow morning, so yay! at Kosovo camp as you can see it's not very populated compared to some of the other camps that we've been to and there is our setup right up there it took us about 45 minutes to get up here and it was brutal my eyes literally watered up see see there's tears coming down those eyes because it was not easy uh, we are at about 16,000 feet elevation right up here um, and <laughs> fun fact there's a helipad landing right there so in case somebody gets sick uh, they can come and evacuate you which is I guess a good thing um, and uh, we saw a lot of people coming down the trail who have already summited today and uh, we saw quite a number of people who were actually experiencing altitude 
to do some of this. Um, including that lady over there, as you can see, she's being led by two people because um, she needs to uh, decrease her altitude right now. See right there. So um, it happens a lot. So uh, Diamox, I would say for sure, keep taking that because that helps a lot. So today we're going to be doubling up on our dose and then by before our departure tomorrow, we're gonna be doubling up on the dose as well to help with everything. And we're leaving in the middle of the night um, to try to summit that beautiful peak. Do you see that? Do you see that? Yeah, I can barely see that because of the clouds. But anyways, that's where we're going to be tomorrow morning. So awesome. Uh, this was, I think, one of the hardest parts of the whole thing so far. Um, the incline wasn't that bad. It was, you know, between 45 and 65 to maybe 70 degrees. It's the lack of breathable oxygen that makes it very difficult. So, um, yeah, we made it so far. Um, our crew uh, got out here a little late, so our tents were not completely set up and we're waiting to eat lunch. So we're gonna eat quick lunch, take a little nappy nap, and then dinner, and then uh, wake up in a couple of hours and then embark on the final leg of the journey. So, yay, exciting. <laughs> It's day seven and it's midnight and we're having our little tea and cookies and we are ready to embark on a six hour journey to the top. Uh, it's not gonna be easy, but we're gonna do it. I want to talk about day seven because there's no way I was gonna be able to make the video yesterday based on what the day was so yesterday day seven was the day of the summit so we got up to the highest point in Africa which is um, excuse me while I remind myself <clears throat> okay so yesterday we made it to the highest point in Africa which is 19,000 341 feet so yeah I was there 
Um, so let me tell you a little bit about how the day started. So first we um, had a wake up call at 11.30 p.m. dinner. Uh, no, dinner was the five o'clock, so very early dinner. So then we had a little bit of time to nap. But of course, because you're so stressed out and excited about what's coming, um, you don't really get to sleep that much. So me personally, I think I slept for maybe one hour. And then we woke up at 1.30 and we were ready to leave the camp at about 12.30, 12.45. So it is obviously pitch dark and windy and uh, somewhat wet and cold. It was really, really cold. So we had to all line up behind our guide with our little headlamps on and just follow him up the hill. Um, so traditionally this route, um, they say takes about six hours. It took us seven hours, but uh, you know, when I tell you going seven hours up the mountain, it doesn't really do it justice because this was exhausting. It's a, it's a little bit of a mind fuck, so you have to really um, keep telling yourself uh, different things to help get you through it. At one point, you know, we were so high up and everything was frozen over, so all the rocks were glistening and glittering, and I just kept telling myself, <clears throat> look at all the beauty around you. It's all glitter and sunshine. Well, not sunshine. <laughs> glitter and sparkle. It's exactly what you love. So... Um, I kept focusing on that, looking up at the stars, which could be dangerous because you really have to be careful where you step your foot uh, because the terrain is treacherous and uh, definitely would not recommend this with um, any sort of knee issues or leg issues or foot issues because this is a difficult trek up to the top. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we have to go to the bathroom um, uh, because this cliffs are very steep on either side of you usually when you're walking um, you can just tumble down to your death um, you have to go to the bathroom in front of everybody from your group um, which I thought was really funny because we all got to know each other very very quickly um, so our guide used to <laughs> use different words for going to the bathroom like looking for internet or looking for a mountain lion or sending a message or you know one of those things so um we would uh, look for a mountain lion just uh, down the path from where we just walked trying to hide from the upcoming people and you can just look down the mountain and see the the river of headlamps going up uh, and everybody's trying to reach the summit so when you're getting up so high it gets to the point where the air is so rare and you just absolutely cannot even take a breath and even the smallest little movement um, takes a lot of effort so we got up to the Stella point and it's like a big sigh of relief Woo! you know we are finally done with the super steep climb um, and you get your little picture taken and everything but even at that point people start getting sick um, and even somebody from our tour got sick unfortunately um, so it's it is real even on um, a Diamax um, altitude sickness can happen to even the best of athletes and it's a no joke so um, essentially in almost every camp that we've been so far there has been a helipad for this specific reason so they can evacuate people out who have really bad altitude sickness because it is serious so you get to Stella point and you go okay great I made it uh, no you didn't <laughs> there's still a 45 minute climb up to the actual highest spot and by the time you get there you're just exhausted you're not thinking straight um, I try to have my nose covered because breathing in that cold air was extremely painful uh, but you know then your nose runs <laughs> so um, and your nose runs regardless either way so it's a it's a, it's a double-edged sword either you try to protect yourself or you know you're just constantly blowing your nose so you get to the point and then there is a long line of people who have also all come up there trying to um, take their picture and then you're just like, the second I sat down I start falling asleep and even on my way up, even the guys from other um, groups were shaking my shoulders and they were like, don't fall asleep, don't fall asleep. I can't, apparently that's a bad thing, I don't know, but I was so sleep deprived and so tired and um, did not have enough oxygen to breathe that I would just doze off as I'm sitting up. So, And even at some point when I was walking, um, I would just kind of look for the shadows of the lamps in front of me and have my eyes half closed. Um, so I was like sleepwalking essentially up the mountain, very safe with sheer cliffs on either side. Great. <laughs> um, so you get to the top and you're so excited, but you're too um, exhausted to be excited. So I try to do like a little jumpy 
uh, picture thing. Um, I, t I attempted it twice and it took everything I had out of me <laughs> um, because you just cannot breathe. So uh, you spend about 10 to maybe 15 minutes up there um, because that's all you really need and that's all you really can stomach. And then we started our descent. So uh, usual descent should take two hours. Um, for us, it took three hours and the usual descent should take six hours. For us, it took about seven hours because we got there at 7.40 in the morning and we left at about 12.40. So full day of trekking up the freaking mountain. Um, and then going down, it was like skiing down uh, gravel and dirt and um, I'm allergic to dust. So I was just sneezing and my nose was running and it was just absolutely miserable time. We finally made it to camp and our amazing crew waited for us with song and dance and it was so nice to be welcomed and congratulated like that. That was really, really, really awesome. Ah, then, um, you know, we wanted to eat lunch. But I was just too exhausted um, because going up to that altitude just does something to your stomach. And I just couldn't, I couldn't eat anything. Even though I was hungry and exhausted, I couldn't eat anything. So um, here's why I broke down because our day was not over there. So that's 10 hours of absolute exhaustion. Um, then we had about an hour or maybe two hours to gather our stuff, eat, and then continue walking. Can you believe that? Yes, I said it, continue walking. Um, so this walk should have usually taken maybe four hours, but because we were so exhausted, it took us a little over five. So seven hours up the mountain, the tallest peak in Africa, three hours coming down, and then five more hours going to the next Moeka camp. And then on top it all off, um, it started raining uh, maybe two thirds into our hike. So our gloves are got, got wet and we all got sick and um, the road was really slippery because it was a lot of slippery rocks um, and it was not an easy road and it was all downhill. So all of us were suffering from knee issues and uh, this was not a pleasant experience. So 15 hours of overall exhaustion running on essentially zero hours of sleep and not that much food. So at lunch, I just broke down in tears because I thought I did not have anything else in me to give and I could not go on this walk. And actually we were the last ones to pack. Um, so our camp was already getting t torn down when we were um, having our bags packed ready for the porters. So, um, oh um, yeah, I forgot to say one other thing. So on our way to the summit, we had our two guides with us and a summit Porter, who was so sweet I feel like without him um, this experience would not have been the same he carried us hot tea so we could have hot tea on the way up to the summit and uh, even you know I mentioned that my nose was running all the time because it was so cold and and dusty and everything and he literally had toilet paper in his pocket and would help blow my nose whenever I needed to I feel like I was treated like a princess he would help me with my hacking sticks help me organize everything in my bag whatever we needed on our trip um this summit porter was incredible jumbo so um i think that he actually made this whole experience so much better because <coughs> he made it a little bit easier uh okay so porters carried our stuff down to moeka camp which was another 10 kilometers that we had to go in rain on slippery rocks and um this is the moeka camp right there so we made it here at about 5.30 last night and we were just exhausted and actually nobody besides me could really eat because everybody was still sick. So um, I think it was the effect of Diamox and just such a drastic altitude change because we went up 3,000 feet from Kosovo camp um, and then down 3,000 feet back to Kosovo camp and then another down 3,000 feet to Moeka camp. So it's a lot of altitude change and just physical exertion. And then this morning we woke up, it, as you can see, it's a lush forest. Um, so it was very rainy and uh, inside of our tent was wet. The top of the, <laughs> the top of the parka that I had over me was wet. Uh, but today is the last day, so this is day eight. And what's gonna happen now is we're gonna have breakfast here in our little tent over there. And then we are hiking for four hours to Moeka Gate, at which point we're going to be picked up by a bus, 
back to civilization. <laughs> um, I think we're also going to stop by a little courier shop where you can buy souvenirs because, you know, who doesn't like souvenirs? We're going to have lunch and then it's going to be a three hour drive back to Arusha, at which point we're going to be in a hotel and I can wash this mess of a hair. This hair hasn't been washed for eight days. It's been rained on, full of dust, full of all kinds of shit. Who knows? <laughs> And uh, I'm impressed that I've been able to put on makeup every morning. Check out my nails all grown out and gross. Um, my tonsils are swollen. Uh, my nose is running. So I hope it's allergies. I hope I didn't really just get sick from being at such extremely low temperatures and um, such a drastic altitude change and such crazy physical exertion. So it remains to seen. Overall, I would say this has been an incredible experience. We've grown so close to our, with our guides and uh, um, with our group. Um, and it's definitely a character building experience for sure. Uh, it's not for anybody. <laughs> you definitely need to, um, to, we definitely need to exercise and uh, practice for this trip because you cannot just, just show up and do it. It is extremely physically exerting. And even if you think you can do it on the first first second third fourth fifth maybe even sixth day seventh day is going to kick your ass and um it's really going to be mind over matter and uh muscle so that's it um, um so <coughs> it's going to be mind over matter and muscle and uh just perseverance and uh, i'm proud to say that i was able to do it on plant power so yeah um so let me know where else i should go next what other amazing place i should visit and conquer but i did a little dance on top of africa and i'm super proud of myself super proud that i actually um decided to do this and i made it happen so very very excited are you a porter no but that one is <laughs> hey jumbo oh, jumbo jumbo And you're on. Oh, we're on. Okay, great. We're in a rainforest in Tanzania. And here you can see a dead tree. But there's beauty in death, as you can see. There's moss growing everywhere. And wait, that's not all. There's a little spider who made its little house right in there. And he's hunting other beautiful forest creatures. And wait, that's not all. There's mushrooms and other mossy looking things and grass. I mean, what more could you ask for? This is the beauty that we all come to see outside in the, in the nature. Yeah, this is it. Peace out, sign out. How are you, Vanya? We are done, almost. Okay, wait, wait. Let me go,